to introduce the speaker of today, which is Camille Rustavols. She is assistant professor at the University of Strasbourg in France, and she works uh, at the INRE at Co in Colmar in France. So her main research topic is grapevine genetics and genomics. And her, the focus of her research is the characterization of gene families involved in wine aromas and grapevine resistance to pathogen. So she has a wide expertise in transcriptomics, genome assembly, and the development of tools and pipeline to make omics data accessible to biologists. And today she is gonna talk about the Integrate, a cost action project that aims to um, uh, maximize the power of omics for grapevine uh, by data integration standards. And with this, I welcome Camille. She already shared her screen. And so, yes, uh, Camille, if you want, you can start whenever you want. Thank you very much, Anarita, for the, the nice introduction. And so I'm very pleased to be here virtually <laughs> with you uh, to, to talk to you about the, the, the Integrate Cost Action. Uh, so as Anarita said, so it's about data integration to maximize the power of omics. And it's really dedicated to, to grapevine, but I'm going to, uh, to go more into detail with, uh, with that. So um, maybe you, you don't know about what a, a cost action is. So I figured that I will present you that uh, at first. So what does cost mean? So of course, money, but this is not the point. I mean, not really the point of uh, this talk. So it's uh, cost stands for European Cooperation in Science and Technology. So it's uh, actually uh, a European uh, organization which, which is funded by the European Union. And so it's pretty, it's pretty old because it's working since uh, 1971. And the only goal, if I may say, is to, to, um, to help a researcher to work together and to create networks. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not about funding research, uh, funding experiments, funding uh, uh, creation or generation of data of any kind, not at all. It's about networking, bringing people together, organizing meetings, uh, exchange and organizing exchange of people or students uh, in different labs or this kind of things. So, um, so it's this is a it's really a networking uh, tool for research, and they uh, this organization. Maybe I can get the pointer here. Yeah, so so and um, there is also one goal which is uh, um, dedicated to actually try to enhance uh, the, in, the 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 societal impact of research. So to to make links between research and uh, and society. So the <clears throat> uh, the cost uh, organization is. Uh, um, is organized with um, member countries. So it's really focused on, on Europe, but not only, it goes a bit broader than that uh, because uh, it, um, it also includes um, countries like uh, Turkey, which is in, um, all of these, uh, these countries actually, which are not um, part of the official European Union, but they are allowed to be part of uh, cost uh, action. And also Israel, for example, so you can see the map here. So it goes beyond the, um, the border of the official uh, European Union. And actually the network and the, the, the countries who can be involved in different degrees, let's say, to a, to a cost action is actually worldwide. So you see in purple here, the, 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 cost, the, the cost action members who can actually apply, for example, to get grants uh, for, for a cost action. But there are also um, countries that are uh, partners or uh, na near neighbor countries. 
And so with these two status, uh, these countries are allowed to, uh, to get less, um, less, less grants, for example, or less money to actually uh, um, contribute to, uh, to an action, but still they can, they can, uh, they can be part of, uh, of an action. And the other country, the third states or the international partner countries, um, they are, uh, let's say, encouraged to, to participate to this action for mutual uh, benefits, but unfortunately they cannot be funded to be part of the networking, um, like for example, to attend to meetings organized by uh, cost actions, for example. So you see there are different levels, different degrees, um, depending on the, the, the countries and being linked with Europe uh, to, and they benefit more or less uh, to, with these grants. So <clears throat> this cost um, organization uh, funds uh, what we call actions. So it's like projects, let's say. Uh, so it's meant to be a really bottom-up science and technology networks open to researchers and stake, stakeholders and all science and technology disciplines. So it's not only about biology, not at all. It's about physics, it's about medicine, it, it's about uh, chemistry, any kind of, uh, of science. So it's a very, very broad um, panel of uh, uh, topics. For, for research, not only biology, but very broad. Uh, um, there are about uh, 250 uh, cost actions uh, which are running at the same time, for meaning that they are funded at the same time by, by the European Union. And as I introduced you already, so the cost actions are working uh, through a range of networking tools so uh, what we can um, actually do within a cost action, we can organize uh, training schools, we can organize what we call short-term scientific missions. So this is um, an exchange of people. So for example, if uh, um, a student in my lab want to, to, um, to visit a lab to get a, a new um, expertise in one field, I can ask for a grant uh, to the cost action if it's linked with the topic of the action and, uh, and, gets, and my student can get some money to visit another lab for a week, two, a month. Uh, so a sh rather short term scientific mission. And so, and it's main, mainly meant for um, young researchers. Also, uh, there, there are um, also grants to attend uh, conferences, um, especially for uh, certain um, countries. I'll come back to that later. Also, uh, another networking tool is uh, for dissemination activities. So through, for example, uh, website or websites or also social media, so we have um, money, for example, to, uh, to develop um, and to maintain a website. And the last but not least, the, the last tool, so it's we, we can get money to organize conferences and workshops, so to gather uh, scientists together to talk about science, to um, try to organize themselves and, um, and um, into a network and to achieve the goal of the, the project. So I told you earlier that um, the European countries are, well, are members, but we can distinguish between two types of um, members within the, the, within the, the cost uh, countries. You can see the purple ones and the green ones. So the green ones are what we called ITC, so inclusiveness target countries. So these uh, the the green uh, countries. Um, how to say that? Um, there are countries where 
uh, research is probably a bit um, uh, less not developed, but uh, the, maybe the government doesn't fund research as much in these green countries compared to the to the purple ones. So really, the, the cost and through the European Union, so they they'd like to uh, to help uh, these uh, these countries to uh, to develop the, the their research. And so these green countries, they can act, they have a facility to uh, to access to uh, certain grants, for example. So this is part of the cost inclusiveness policy. So for example, these uh, ITC, these ITC countries, or also earlier career, career investigators or um, female scientists, they they are. Um, really encourage, and this is part of the cost policy, uh, there are some rules so that um, members of ITC, early career investigator or female researcher, they have to take some leadership role in every action and they can benefit and or they can benefit from um, dedicated cost networking tool, in particular, uh, the short-term scientific mission so it's um, yeah, or they they can have an easy access to, to training schools, and there are, for example, the ITC country people from the ITC country are the only one who can apply for ITC country grants, for example. So there is a, a very um, specific point to to uh, help. Uh, young scientists, female scientists, and uh, people from with where research is less developed compared to other European countries to to get help and to uh, to get into the the dynamic of the the whole action. So how is um, is an action uh, structured and organized? So it's always uh, with this, uh, it's following this scheme. So there is a, a management committee. So this management committee is composed of uh, one or two um, uh, researcher, uh, researcher per um, country. So for example, uh, I'm going to that later, but for example, with the, the Integrate Cost Action, there are two, two members from Italy, two members from France, Spain, etc. And so all these, um, these people um, are part of the management committee. And this management committee um, takes the, the, the decisions related to, uh, to, the, to the action. So they decide on the budget that is allocated to, for example, um, STSM, to the uh, to the organization of uh, the meetings, um, to the, the the budget allocated to the training school, so they have to the the, the management committee votes uh, for um, every decision related to the um, to the organization, the budget of the the action. This uh, this uh, this management committee is. Um, is led by the action chair and an action vice chair as well. And um, aside, there is also the, the grant holder, so which is the, the institution who is um, actually uh, who is um, uh, uh, the administrative uh, part of it. So uh, dealing with. Uh, uh, the budget actually and help and reimbursing people, this kind of thing. So um, under the, the management committee, so the people involved in the management committee, but not only, uh, the whole community who wants to take part of the action is, is um, can contribute to different work groups. So, which are uh, defined precisely for every given action. So, I, maybe it's going to be more clearer when I go really to the example of uh, the integral one. 
So how does a cost action start? So um, first, uh, there is a, a call for proposal. So um, a group of research, a group of European researchers, uh, so they can submit a proposal to the to the cost. Then there is a selection process by the cost committee. And um, <clears throat> there is um, what we call a memorandum of understanding, which are this is basically the rules, the law, let's say, um, uh, for the for the cost. And so as soon as uh, the, 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 the said the, an action is uh, selected by the, the committee, uh, the members, the, the countries who are willing to be part of an action, they have to agree to follow the rules written in the memorandum of understanding. And as soon as uh, seven countries agreed on this uh, memorandum of understanding, the, the action can actually start uh, with the first, the, organiza the, the, yeah, the organization of the first management committee, uh, which, uh, which is the, the, the start of the, the action. Usually an action runs for four years, and it's also open as I, Try to explain you to international uh, corporations, so um, not only Europe but worldwide, and is allowing the participation and contribution from researchers from other countries on the basis of mutual benefit. So th this was the theory. <laughs> now we can go uh, more into um, practice and and explain. Uh, the, the cost action in Tegrape to which I, I, I belong. So um, this uh, cost action uh, in Tegrape stands for uh, inter interoperability or integration uh, of omics for grapevine. So data integration to maximize the power of omics for grapevine improvement. So the the, originally, the project was um, written and uh, submitted uh, by um, Professor Mario Pezzotti, uh, along with uh, Dr. Anne-Françoise Adam Blondon, um, so a member of Italy and a member of uh, France. And so this uh, project uh, was selected and it started in September um, 2018. And it's about to end uh, in September this year. So first, as you know, you're not uh, uh, probably or you're not all from the, the grapevine community, I'd like to to make a little bit uh, to give a little bit of context why um, why it was important to to develop such kind of uh, action uh, on grapevine. So white grapes, so you all know that uh, grape uh, is an agricultural commodity of uh, very uh, highly economical importance. It's uh, widely grown worldwide and especially uh, in Europe um, for, for centuries. Um, and so that's why um, we kind of, yeah, uh, yeah, European researchers on grapevine, we try to to emphasize that uh, grape is very important for Europe, so we get actually the, the cost, cost grant, and it's, it worked, apparently. And also, um, <clears throat> it, uh, it appears that grape vine is, uh, is um, a model plant for perennials and fruit trees. And this is, um, this is uh, also because um, grape vine was the fourth on genome to be sequenced back in 2007. So it's uh, such a long time. And um, it's uh, since then, uh, there has been a great production, a great, um, yeah, uh, yeah, great production of omics data of um, any kind, uh, gene genetics, genomics, uh, resequencing, of course, but also 
um, phenotyping, metabolomics, all kind of uh, different kind of omics dedicated to, to grapevine. And it appears that um, for the, the, the grapevine community, these uh, omics data are very uh, dispersed and not uh, interoperable. So this, uh, this is uh, the, the problem. And we actually, the community, not only researchers, but also readers and uh, winery who are, uh, which are involved in uh, uh, research and development, they would like to, um, to, to have uh, this data more um, interoperable, more fair, let's say, let's say the word fair, so that we can all, we can all together uh, face the, the challenges um, of global warming and uh, sustainable agriculture, um, especially uh, focused on, on grapevine. So the, <clears throat> the challenge for the, um, the cost action uh, in Tegrape was to establish an open international and representative network uh, that integrates data from existing resource because we didn't have money to generate any resource, but just gather people to work together and trying to integrate what's already there. So of course, in a cost effective manner, as well as making interoperable grapevine data sets and tool available in the sector and standardized formats. So basically, the idea was to um, help the community to make uh, the grapevine data fair. So the structure of uh, the Integrape uh, cost action is as follows. So for example, I'm part of the, the management committee for France. Um, the, so Mario and Anne Francoise, uh, who um, submitted the project, uh, are now chair and vice chair of uh, this action. And they were, uh, the, I should, it's, it's not past, it's still ongoing. So the, they are four uh, work groups um, led by um, these uh, four scientists. And we can count on uh, 25 member countries and 13 ITC countries. So the, you know, the green ones. And uh, also the contribution of five near uh, neighbor countries. So to give you a little more details about the, the working groups, here are the, are the different titles for the working group. So uh, the first working group is dedicated to data interoperability and definition of minimal contextual data standards. So it's mostly about um, uh, ontologies, um, um, having um, uh, interoperable formats. Um, so it's rather, let's say, yeah, yeah, technical on the, on the metadata and the formats of the, the, the data sets. The work group two is about interoperability of infrastructures and web services. So mostly, uh, um, yeah, uh, so, um, I say, yeah, that the interfaces or the, the portals that needs to be uh, interoperable, interoperable between each other. Work group three is about data analysis and best practices. So the idea here with this um, work group is to um, is to provide the community with some uh, common uh, pipelines and also guidelines on how to perform this or uh, that um, analysis. So we'll come back to that later on. And the fourth one is um, the organization of webinars and hands-on session. So um, mostly dissemination and training um, tools. 
So here are all the deliverables. I won't go into detail, but just to show you that we had some, <laughs> some uh, goals to, uh, to achieve. And we are pretty proud of uh, that we, we actually achieved uh, pretty much all of them before the end. So we are quite happy with that. And I'd like to, yeah, I will go through some of them to uh, detail a bit later on. So during the, the frame of the Integrate um, project, so we were able to organize uh, different um, meetings. So we had uh, four annual meetings. Uh, of course, we had the, the sanitary crisis in the middle of the, the project, so we had to uh, to switch from um, uh, real uh, meetings to virtual meetings, but uh, uh, this didn't this crisis didn't impact it, the, the the action the integrate cost action that much. I should say it was very dynamic, even though the uh, we were all working um, from home. That's, so this is uh, this is very nice. So for annual meetings, we organized also um, a lot of training schools, so uh, five training schools. Two uh, uh, will be will uh, take place. Uh, so this Anot training school is going to uh, be yeah within a month now in uh, in Spain, and the last one will be virtual. But a lot of training with a lot of. Uh, people attending these, um, these training schools and also working group meetings. <laughs> this funny slide, I, I, I'm not asking you to follow the, the arrows because it's impossible, but it's just to, to, to give you an idea on um, the exchange of people. So the, the short-term scientific missions uh, that uh, happened during the, the time of the, the project. So the main achievement of the, the cost action are these ones. So I will go through uh, these into more detail. So for example, for the tools and resources, so the first achievement was the integrate website. So you can find the link here if you want to navigate and, and see the resources that are available here. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice uh, website. So it's a great work. Um, on this website, you will have access to a catalog of tools that are uh, dedicated to Grapevine. So this was one of uh, our deliverables to actually have some kind of uh, website where uh, we list of all the tools um, available and which follows the FAIR uh, principles we were able to, um, to um, build or to write a phenotyping guidelines. So especially on how to describe a grapevine experiment and the sample metadata. So the, it's, um, there was a, a, a huge work um, uh, with, with, done by the, the researchers um, which with a phenotyping expertise to work on ontology, how to define um, an organ, how to define a, a developmental stage. So this, uh, this was a great achievement. We also developed guidelines for genomics and transcriptomics data, and especially on how to submit sequences to the um, ENA. So the, uh, public uh, database for uh, sequences. We um, also um, provide provided uh, guidelines for metabolomics, which is uh, is based on the a paper that has been submitted. So, which uh, so these guidelines help uh, people uh, to um, to submit their metabolomic uh, data in a fair uh, way. We um, also worked 
together to, uh, to develop a grape gene reference catalog. So uh, I, I told you that the, great, the first uh, grape one reference genome was established in 2007, but there were several uh, versions for, for this uh, reference genome since then. And so it's already difficult to, to, to uh, track your gene in, of interest in different versions. So uh, we decided to, to, to build this uh, gene reference catalog so it helps um, the community to, to keep track of all the genes uh, which were, which were um, functionally characterized and to, to make sure they can track their gene of interest in every um, grapevine uh, reference genome version. We also um, were able to produce a new version of the grapevine reference genome, which uh, uh, has the best stats uh, uh, compared to the, to the previous ones and a nicer annotation. We also developed all kinds of uh, different interfaces and tools. And we, uh, we wrote some uh, manual curation guidelines as well to help the community to, um, to be proactive in uh, uh, manual curation of um, the, the, the gene annotation. So this, this, uh, this is, uh, these are all great um, achievements, but unfortunately the, the cost action integrate ends in September. And uh, so the, we were able to achieve a lot of things, but to make them interoperable is uh, still something that, uh, that needs to be done. And also we figured that there are much more resources that were not included in um, what we thought at the, at the beginning. And so um, the, the, the idea is to move on afterwards, um, after the integrate uh, action uh, with the Graypedia uh, project um, and so this, uh, uh, this Graypedia project uh, will be uh, led by Thomas Matus and, uh, and myself as a, as a vice chair. And so the, what this Graypedia is, so it's, we actually applied um, to the cost uh, organization uh, for a cost innovator grant. So let's say SIG. So a SIG uh, scheme is aiming at stimulating innovation, stemming from cost action. So a SIG is always uh, like um, linked, linked to, a, to a cost action. So when a cost action is over, we could apply to a SIG uh, grant. And the idea here is to, is to, is to build uh, bridges between research and marketable application uh, and also societal solutions. So the idea is to go more into uh, business, let's say, less research, but more business. And so these grants, the SIG grants have a duration of uh, one year and we could access uh, the same networking activities. So working group meetings, training schools, uh, short-term scientific missions, um, conferences and the, the deliverable of this SIG uh, project should be, uh, has to be, sorry, a business plan. So something, uh, um, yeah, uh, not, not only research. So the idea here is based on what was created in the frame of Integrate is to actually link all what has been done and to make everything interoperable uh, to serve the, the needs of the community. Yeah. So it's really building on what was achieved uh, in the frame of Integrate, but uh, make it um, yeah, easier and to, to access and uh, interoperable so we can go beyond uh, each individual data sets. So the <clears throat> Graypedia, um, so it's supposed to be a, a, a portal where um, 
all the, the data may be uh, gathered. So everything starts with uh, what the community can uh, provide. So um, all kinds of uh, data, metabolic, metabolic data, phenotypes, genomes, uh, all kinds of data. These, uh, these data can be, um, so will be uh, integrated in a um, database, so in the, the, great, the great media database, uh, which we are think we are, in, um, uh, we are figuring it will be like a modular uh, structure composed of different modules. And so that makes easier to add new modules um, later on, for example. And this uh, database um, will help to provide uh, services like access to browser or dashboards or also provide workflows. And so these services will benefit back to the, the community and to help researchers, but also breeders and wineries. So let's imagine that uh, Repedia is already working, which is not the case. So uh, this is how we, um, we dream of uh, our uh, portal or database. Uh, so this could be a Grapedia dashboard where you could uh, access all kinds of information. So let's say you are interested in uh, one given uh, gene here. And so you, you, can, uh, you can request to make a research here and you can access all kinds of different data, expression, uh, you can access the, the genome browser, the co-expression network for this gene, for example. So I, I told you that a very important point uh, for the, the SIG uh, proposal is the business plan and so the financial aspects later on. So to keep the, the project uh, living uh, even when the, the grant is over. So the idea is to work in close collaboration with, um, with the private uh, sector. So um, a nursery uh, is already involved in the project, Mercier, uh, and two wineries, Gallo uh, Winery and one in Spain. And they are part of the, the project and they are willing to contribute uh, finan financially to it and to help establishing the database. And the idea, and we also have a, a company on board, a Sequentia, uh, which is uh, expert in, um, in um, services uh, for uh, anal analysis of uh, omics data and to, uh, for building uh, applications. So the, this, uh, two aspects we hope uh, will help to maintain this uh, database, um, Grapedia database uh, in time. So right now the, the Grapedia project is still under evaluation. Actually, Thomas uh, defended it uh, in Brussels yesterday. So in front of the, the cost uh, committee. So we are crossing fingers and we hope uh, we'll get an answer by the end of June. And if it's funded, um, it will start in November for a year. But uh, we are not waiting for the funding to, to get started. And it's already, Grapedia is already a very dynamic network. We are organizing meetings already. We initiate interactions. See, that's why I'm here today. Um, we are communicating on our project in different conferences and we are organizing surveys. So some kind of same kind of tools that you are using, it seems. And so, yeah, we cross fingers that this project will be funded. And I like to, to, to stop uh, my presentation here because um, we are still waiting for the, the, the answer um, for the Graypedia project. And I really like to, to acknowledge, um, so the cost, of course, who made all this, um, this project possible. 
the mem the people involved in the integrate cost action, of course, Mario and Francoise, all the, the work group leaders, pilot project leaders, the management committee members, the grant holder. For Graypedia, I'd like to warmly thank Thomas Mattis and Marie Digby, the whole SIG team, the advisory board. And also I'd like to warmly thank the whole Grapevine community involved because they are very, all very active and willing to make things better. So, and thank you for your attention. And thank you, Camille, for your presentation. So we have a couple of questions, no, one question. Um, so the first, the Marco is asking, is the catalog of these resources itself, description of tools, guidelines, et cetera, exported as fair metadata? Uh, so I'm reading it at the same time. Um, I mean, everything is accessible on the website. Um, so, um, is uh, the, the catalog for the, the resource. I'm not sure it's, uh, uh, if Marco, you had the, the catalog of the tools in mind, it's mostly uh, just um, a list of link where you can actually uh, um, access to the tools. Uh, I'm not sure that by itself, uh, the the catalog the catalog is uh, is fair, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's actually what we need to improve uh, later on also in the Graypedia uh, project. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so there are other couple of questions. So Lena is asking, to what extent did you try to harmonize with related efforts such as uh, MyApple for plant phenotyping data? And I know that the colleagues uh, who were involved in the, um, the phenotyping uh, data, uh, they, they have been uh, working a lot with uh, MyAPI and try to, um, to harmonize uh, everything. Uh, they just, um, uh, it, it was more not creating new things, but it was more helping the grapevine community to, to um, to use uh, the right uh, the right ontologies dedicated to grapevine, because for example, there are uh, very um, there are organs that are very specific to grapevine. Let's say tendrils, or uh, so yeah. So it's it's based on my API, uh, but it's just to to help grapevine community on which ontology to use in the my API. Um. And then Tanner is asking, I see that you are developing Vitis Pan Genome Browser. Could you talk more about that? For example, which software are you using to display Pan Genomes? So <clears throat> about Pan Genome Browser, uh, let's say that um, so far, it's not the, the, really the, the European um, network who was the, the most, most involved in that. We, we collaborate a lot with uh, Doreen, uh, who is part of, uh, of um, Edgy, uh, Biodata, uh, Doreen Weir, uh, mm -hmm. and she uh, and her group, they are, they are working a lot on, um, on um, palm genomes in general, but it's especially they have a focus on, on grapevine. And they are developing all kinds of um, tools to visualize pond genome. And also, there is the, the group of uh, Dario, Dario Cantu mm -hmm. uh, in California. Uh, and his group, uh, they, are, they are really working hard on dis how to display pond genome. So I'm, I, I don't have the details to give because I'm not personally involved in that. But uh, uh, yeah, it's mostly mm -hmm. Doreen and Dario who. Uh, who are the experts? Um, uh, then there is Kelly asking, I noticed in the book of abstract for the 2022 meeting, there was no mention of microbes or metagenomics. Do you have any efforts underway of thoughts about how to begin incorporating the disparate microbial and meta metagenomic data? 
that's a, that's a very nice question, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this, I think we we haven't reached that point yet. So uh, we are so far only focused on grapevine and what's on the plant or <laughs> around uh, is not yet uh, implemented in the, the data sets we are uh, working on, but uh, definitely it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting and very important uh, that at some point we focused on these. Um, so yeah. We have to keep that in mind, and it can be one of the modules that we could add afterwards. Mm. Um, yeah, I have one question regarding the educational part of the project. So, like, uh, you guys are um, mostly doing workshop, and how effective was it? So, I see probably you did one or two already. So how was effective uh, the workshop? Did, are you also planning to write, let's say, uh, a white paper about that? Did you already do that? So yes, the, the workshops were very productive. So um, let me, for example, talk about the, the, the one I was mostly involved. So it's more, it's easier for me. So for example, last year, we organized a, a workshop uh, here in Colmar. And it is so we, we gathered um, people expert in the gene annotation. And we the, the, the goals were to um, so to work together on uh, setting up a guideline of to um, uh, dedicate it to manual curation so that we can provide these guidelines. So these guidelines are now available on the Integrate website. So it's not published in a white paper or so, but it's, uh, it's supposed to be, um, to be um, linked to the, to the publication, uh, which is going to, uh, to the, 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 the new reference genome publication. So it's going to be part of that. But it's already these guidelines, we, we built them uh, during this workshop. And they are already fully available. And these guidelines now are the basis for the training school that we are going to organize uh, next month. So it's really like um, we, we gathered experts together building the guidelines. We, we um, publish them, let's say, at least on the website later on in the paper. And we are using them to organize the training school. And so it has been, I think, for this example, very efficient, a very efficient way. Um. Um, uh, okay, so, okay, I think Monica, she raised the hand, so I don't know if she wants to ask. Yeah, yeah. sure, thanks. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Um, well, first of all, just a comment. I appreciate your presentation, Camille. I, I noticed many, many parallels between what AgBioData is attempting to do as a network and what Integrate ha has uh, successfully set out to do now by the end of, of your funding period. So I appreciate seeing uh, the groundwork that you laid and, and how you accomplished all these things. And I am motivated to go and uh, review some of the publications that, that you presented on here um, as well. Um, a question, um, as a member of the Ag Biodata De Data Federation Working Group, I noticed um, of the four working groups that you had, I think the second one was uh, mostly related uh, on, on data integration or um, basically the technologies. Uh, could you point me, uh, but I didn't notice in the outcomes that you provided in your slides that there was a specific product from that one. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you point me to any resources that that group generated so that the data federation working group that we have currently knows what this group produced in case there are any similarities in the needs that we observed. Uh, thank you, Monica, for your question. So I, I can tell that you've been following quite well because uh, this actually the, the work group two has been no judgment here, but maybe the less dynamic uh, during the, the this cost action. I think that they this group suffered from the sanitary crisis. They had trouble to, to, to meet and to, to make this work group uh, live, really. So um, unfortunately, they are not 
not much of um, achievements or outreach from from this uh, web group except that we that uh, they were able to list um, uh, applications or interface or database uh, uh, that are meeting the fair uh, standards but apart from that the, there was uh, um, nothing um, nothing about interoperability or really integration of, of data and that's what that that's why we wanted to to move um, further forward and with this Graypedia uh, database, if it makes sense, Monica. Oh yeah, sure. And I fully appreciate the, the problems with meeting and keeping uh, motivation going during the pandemic. I think we've all, it's been a, it's been a rough two or more years for everyone. Um, yeah. I guess sort of related um, is uh, you, you went into detail at the beginning of your talk about the cost structure of, of or the funding structure of the cost um, uh, initiative. Um, does cost also fund developers or did it only go to these networking activities? No, cost is really only dedicated to networking activities. Okay, very uh, similar if, to us, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, I think also, Monica, um, uh, part of the people, part of the Integrate, they were also thinking to join the Data Federation Working Group, so. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I already put them in contact with Jennifer. I guess, mm -hmm. yeah. Certainly, we'd be, we'd be happy to have more and have, <laughs> you, have your expertise to join us. Yeah. Um, yeah. It will be mutual benefit, so, yeah. Um, I don't know, I think if there are no more questions, uh, so I will thank you, Camille, for your presentation and for sharing with us your um, journey in this, in fair data. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much. And thank you all of you for joining us today and see you next time. <laughs>